Hello, everybody. I'm Laura. I'm a front-end developer at Swedbank. But today I want to talk about music, how we can code music. And I already noticed that people get really confused with this term music programming. And despite that we know what is music, we usually know what is programming, we become unsure what we are talking about. So to put it simple, I'm going to talk about coding, where as an output we can generate sound. Well, which one? We can create music. It's simple as this. And a natural question might pop up into your head. So is it more for musicians or more for programmers? Or you need to have both kind of knowledge to start doing something with music programming? Before answering that, I'm always very keen to know about the audience. How many musicians do we have here who are playing with some sort of the instrument, singing or doing something with music? Okay, we have some. Easier question. How many programmers do we have here? Of course, almost everyone. Nice. These knowledges, of course, there are advantages, but honestly, to start doing with something with music programming, you don't need any of that. And I would say that that can be as a perfect entry point to start looking to the programming or musical sites. Let's dive into 1843. This is the year that music programming as an idea was already introduced. And as you see, we did not have the computers as we understand them today. But despite that, Ada Lovell, and she already described in her works that computing engine can be as a perfect tool to create precise and scientific music. That means it's nothing new. This idea has been for a while, and no surprises, we have different ways how we can create music with the code. And today I'm going to talk about two different programming languages. The first one, our universal programming language, JavaScript. How many of you know JavaScript? Of course, almost everyone knows JavaScript, right? I'm going to talk about how can we do live coding, live music coding with JavaScript. That means how can we create and change music on the fly? And how can we incorporate music into our daily basis web applications? And then I'm going to talk about totally different programming languages, language which was specially created for music programming, Sonic Pi. How many of you know Sonic Pi? We have some, nice. I'm going to talk how can we create music with Sonic Pi and how can we do live coding as well. So let's dive into and let's look into JavaScript and for, we, for that we need to meet Jibber. Jibber is the environment which enables us to create audiovisual art. And today we're going to focus only on audio part. What is needed? Nothing to download. It's simple, go to jibber.cc. And I'm going to show you that. This is Jibber. And on the left, you can find different kinds of tutorials and examples. And full right is your coding area. Let's start with Hello World application. And as you probably understand, we will not see Hello World as we get used to that. But in the music program, we have the analogy of this, which is first beep sound. I'm going to use periodical sounds, which we can call oscillators, and one of them are sine. What I'm doing, I'm simply creating object of sine. And in Jibber, I can emit new keyword. That means that's all. I created my object, and I can run my program. We, we hear a first sound, and then the question can be, so how can we manipulate it? Because it's just one sound, and we want to create music. And for that, we need just a bit to look into physics side. Because what sound is in general? Physics saying that sound is vibrations which travel through some sort of material. That material is usually just an air. That means, in order to change the sound, we need to change vibrations. How can we do that? There are a few ways. We can change frequency, that means how often molecules are moving in vibrations, and with that we can reach different pitches. With the high frequency, we can get a higher pitch. With the low frequency, we can get a lower pitch. As well, we can change amplitude, how far molecules are moving in vibrations, and with different amplitude, we can reach different volume. We can get a louder and quieter sounds. Keith and I 
that our ear has limitations and we need to change those uh, options, those values in ranges of hertz and that's us. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Is it all good? Can I continue? Okay. So let's try to do that. Let's try to change these options in Jibber. How can we do that? There are a few ways. The first one, I can provide that frequency, for example, during initialization of this object. I am giving to the constructor that the frequency should be now 600, for example. And we hear a bit different pitch. If I would change this 600 to 400, how many of you think that we would get a lower pitch? How many of you think that we would get a higher pitch? None. Lower pitch, because we have a lower frequency now. And another way, we can actually move this object to be variable. Let's do it now. And then later on, I can reach this property frequency and the changes again. And at this point, I need to tell you one interesting thing in Jibber. When I'm using one letter variable and I'm rerunning my object initialization with different parameters, observe what is happening. But if I would change from the one letter variable to not one letter variable, why did that happen? Why did we hear all sounds playing at the same time? Well, that's actually a mystery. And I'm not kidding here, this is really a mystery and this is what's written in the documentation, that the reason for this remains mysterious, but I promised to be revealed. That means just be aware of this and uh, we can move forward. Because I promised that we can change frequency and we can change amplitude of the sound. Let's do it that now. I can do it in this similar way. I can provide it during initialization of the object or later on. Just. For the amplitudes, we are not using default measures, which are decibels. For amplitudes, I'm using here special gibber measures, where the quarter would be as a default sound. So let's have a bit more than quarter, and something less. So we hear the difference. And with these basics, how can we change frequency, how can we change amplitude? We can move to the next level. Literally, because oscillators are assigned they are pretty low-level elements in Jibber, and there are more advanced ones which are acting more as instrument-like. Let's try to create, instead of sine synth now, I'm creating synthesizer here, and then later on I need to say what kind of note this synthesizer should play. For example, 600. And we hear a different sound. There are different kinds of synthesizers. Let's take another example here, mono, and we hear something different. There is one special synthesizer, which is called sound font. Sound font is a sample-based synthesizer. That means I need to provide what kind of sample base do I want to have this synthesizer. Let's take something classical. Let's take piano here, and we can play some sort of note as well. Thank you. <laughs> and now we can start to play some sort of the melody. The melody, what, you, what we want to reach, just to play the hertz, it's pretty tough. Because you don't know by heart what kind of note it is. And we can change it. Because in musical world, we can express notes by letters. That means we can change here as well. And for those who are not familiar, what I'm saying that there is coloration, 
a correlation between nodes in hertz and in nodes what we express in by letters. We can have a flat and sharp as well. So instead of saying that it is 440, I can say that it's simple A note in fourth octave. And that is working with all synthesizers except sample based. That means I'm changing synthesizer to synth. I'm not taking default, but now I'm taking something else as bleep. Let's provide some more amplitude here. And I'm playing 440. And then I can change it to A4. And it's totally the same. Another optimization that so far I'm playing only with one note. But we can provide list of notes. And instead of rerunning my program again and again, I can just provide the list and that's all. Instead of saying that I'm playing one note, I need to say that I want to play sequence of notes. Or the shorthand would be just and then instead of providing one note, I need to provide two lists here. And the third one, I need to say, what kind of notes do I want to play? Let's have three times E3 note. And then in the second one, I need to say how long each of them should take. And I can express in different ways, for example, the quarter and something else. By default, and I'm using play or sequence of notes, I would get even repetition of these notes. And what does that mean? What I just did here, I just wrote a bunch of notes, different kinds of them, and I rerun my program, and then you heard those changes applied on the fly. Then I moved my, my list of notes to special variables because I wanted to reuse the same times, the same notes for another instrument, mono instrument. And the last part, I introduced a new element, which you see is drums. And drums are one of the most popular. You're always using drums somehow. And for drums creation, you need to provide string of special characters, which indicates what kind of drums do you want to have. We can have open, close, hi-hats, kick snares, and we need to say how long each of them should take. So I have the equal, one eighth and when changed. And maybe you already noticed that to write exact notes usually taking the most time. And due to that, I, prefer, I prepared even more sophisticated example to show how music can look and sound like. So what do I have here? I just have more variables. I have bass notes, bass times, and you see that on top of them, I'm having concatenation here. And this is how I'm making melody notes. I'm changing some part of them. And the same for bass notes. Then I have different kinds of the instruments, synth, bleep, mono, sign. I'm creating them with different parameters here, providing. 
And then I'm just simple playing different kinds of melodies with different kinds of instruments. Keep an eye when I'm, I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna introduce the last element in Jibber, which are effects. That's all with Jiver. This is how we can use JavaScript and create music on the fly. But then I mentioned that we're gonna talk about different topic, how we can use JavaScript and how we can use that for music creation into our web applications. If we are looking into history of audio possibility in the web, that's nothing new. We have different ways how we can do that, but today I want to talk about and look into the most sophisticated way nowadays, which is Web Audio API. And why it is so great? It's not that we can play, replay some audio track. Web Audio API enables us to create our own sounds. That means we can analyze and modify them, and basically we can use our browser as synthesizer. The general idea, how does that work? When we are having web application, we would create audio context where we would store the audio state for the web. And everything gonna happen there. We would create the source that can be our own sounds as, as oscillators, that can be our own tracks, or that can be something like a microphone. And then we would connect it to the output where we want to output the sound. That usually is speakers. And if we want to create something even more to analyze, change them, that would happen in the middle. But with this general picture, this is how we can produce some sound with them. And if you ask me, so how can we create the same first beep sound just from our browser console in these few steps? We would create the context, audio context, then we would create the source, which here is, you see, oscillator, the same sign we had in Jibber. And then we would connect it to the destination and symbol started. So in these few steps, we would hear the same first beep sound. And yes, that's a bit more writing than in Jibber, but we don't need any special environment in Jibber. It's just simple, our browser console. And of course, of course, there are an easier way to do that. Because we developers, we love libraries, and there are many libraries for that as well. One of them is Stone.js. Stone.js is recommended when you're reading about the body API in MDN documentation, for example. And question for you, how many of you use Stone.js already? Not so much. <laughs> okay, so good news, because I'm gonna show you a short demo how we can use Stone into our web applications. Okay, what do I have here so far? I have simple Angular application, and so far here is just, let's look into it. I installed Tone library, simple npm install, and then I have instrument component. So probably you understand. We're gonna create our own instrument today. 
What do I have in HTML? Just a bunch of nodes. I'm iterating through the list, which is here, list of nodes. And I'm just calling play note method and providing that node. But what is happening in component test file? I'm creating from tone library synthesizer, you see it here. It's connected to the master already. I have this synth and I'm just playing, I'm just triggering the right note which is coming from HTML. And I have hard coded length, how long that should take. So with these few steps, we're creating our own instrument. And how does that look? This is our instrument. So you see here that with these few lines, we created instrument which has full range sounds. So we can play any melody we want. But how can we improve that? Because so far we are using default sounds here, which are provided from the synthesizer. And I thought that we can ensure something unique by providing our own sample and playing it still according to the right pitch. So what did I create? I changed it a bit. And what do we have here now? We have another instrument, we have Katiana instrument, which probably you understood, it's playing cat samples, but it's playing according to the right pitch. And I was surprised, honestly surprised, how easy it was to make the tone GS. If we're looking into the code, that thing changed for the synthesizer. But we have a new player here, we have sampler here. Sampler is still from the tone. For sampler creation, I had to provide what kind of sample do I want to play. And here we see that I'm providing original cat sound, cat sample. And then I had to align it to the right note. Honestly, to understand what kind of note cat was singing, that was the hardest part. But it was G2, and as you see here, I did not need to provide anything else. I did not need to change those samples by myself and just to map it to the right note. Tone.js did everything for me. So in these few lines, we have instrument which is playing our own samples and now i believe some of you may think cat sound instrument how useful it is but don't judge me too soon because for those few of you i went an extra mile and i created something special and something different We have Godiano, Doggiano instrument, and now we can move forward. I'm sure all of your expectations are fulfilled. But jokes aside, this is how we can create music in the web. This is how we can produce our own sounds. And usually when we are thinking about front-end development, our full focus is only on the visual part. Sometimes we totally forget that we have audio possibility in the web. But please note, that sometimes our audio part can really enrich visual parts and we can create totally next level of user experience in the dev. If some of you are thinking, Laura, I'd been tricked. I did not sign up for a front-end lecture today. Don't worry, because of this, we are leaving JavaScript and we are moving forward. We are moving forward to totally different programming language, which is Sonic 5. Question for you. Do we have Ruby developers here? Some. So you're going to see some similarities because Sonic Pi is based on Ruby. And interesting that despite that I'm a front-end developer, Sonic Pi was the language which introduced me music programming. And honestly, I honestly like this programming language. Sonic Pi was originally created for lessons at school as an option to combine music and programming. But at the time, it evolved and improved so much that people started to use it for live coding performances. So let's dive into Sonic Pi now. Sonic Pi is coming together with the IDE. You see it here, Sonic Pi IDE. On your right, you're going to see different kinds of the logs when you're running program. And full left is for coding. You already see how we can create Hello World application or program in Sonic Pi. 
We are just saying that play 60. And we can play already. We hear our first beep sound. Probably it's pretty easy to understand what is play. But what is 60? Is it still frequency? Yes, because no one changed the physics part. But here we do not see hertz. 60 is not in hertz. 60 is different expression in sonic pi. But we already know that we don't need numbers. We can write everything in letters. We can express notes in letters. That means here as well I can change 60 to C4. And we have the same. Then we know that we can add some amplitude. And amplitude is one of the options we can add on top of the sound. Default is 1. And if I would have a less, we have a quieter sound. As well, we know that to play the one note is not efficient. Let's change it. Let's, let's play some melody of notes. Let's have some list here. And instead of, instead of having play, I need to say that I want to have play pattern timed now. I need to provide as well two lists. In the first one, I need to say what kind of notes do I want to have. And then in second, how long each of them should take. Let's say one and half. Moving forward, we can change synthesizer because so far we were using a default one bleep in Sonic Pi, and we can change different kind of synthesizers. The first one, classical one, piano. We can have uh, oscillators as sign as well. And then there are some weird ones. Weird ones, let's take some noise, for example, noise synthesizer. And that was still playing according to the notes which I provided. But there are some other elements in Sonic Pi for which we do not even need to provide notes. There are samplers. Samplers is just what we can provide and we can still modify, but we don't need to provide notes. Here I'm having core and drums samples. Let's play it. Moving forward, on top of everything, what I just mentioned, we can add effects. And effects we're adding not on some instrument, not on some melody, but on everything what is inside the block, inside this do and end block. That means all these parts are going to get slicer effect now. There are different kinds of effects. So what do we know so far? We can change some basics as frequency and amplitude. We can add different synthesizers, add different samplers. We can, on top of everything, add effects. And there are a bunch of different ways how we can change sounds. But how can we handle music evolution? Because so far we were playing and replaying some melodies, we, we even don't have repetition, sometimes it's even hard to recognize the difference. And in Sonic Pi, we don't have the repetition as loops by default. We need manually to and explicitly to Im implement that. There are different kinds of loops, and let's start with the fixed ones when we know how many times you want to play it. I'm playing here this kind of note and uh, two times. another kind of loop which is infinite and in music programming we really want to have infinite loop because now our result is in time and if I want to control that I can run it and then stop it and I'm stopping it and with this we can have this melody as long as we wish now we can add some more harmony I'm having this melody Let's have something else playing together. For example, let's have some drums. Let's have it every second. And at this point, is there anyone who do not believe that we're going to get a melody and drums playing together? Few people. Okay, the moment of truth. We do not. And why it is so? Because this is how our program works. It's executed instruction by instruction, 
and we're stuck in the first infinite loop. That means we need explicitly to introduce concurrency here. We need to run this melody and drums in parallel. And how can we do that? There are special loops here in Sonic Pi. They are called live loops. For live loop creation, I need to provide what kind of it, what is the name of it? Because basically we're creating different thread here and we want to provide the name for it. And if I want to create here a live loop, I need to say unique name for it. Let's play it now. Did you notice? I changed the instrument and just reran my program, but we did not lose the beat. We heard the difference, but that was still according to beat. Basically, live loops are not only enabling us to play something in parallel, it enables us to change the code on the fly and just to rerun it. And only now, only now we are reaching live coding in Sonic Pi. And now we can move to my last example today, live coding example. What do I have here so far? I have a few variables, a few variables of notes and times, and it's playing some Lithuanian folk song. I'm having here a function, which is playing four different kinds of chords, and I can manipulate and change it, providing different sleep times and release times. Then I have melody, live loop, chords, live loop, drums, live loop. And I have some commented code. Why it is so, you're going to understand when, when I'm going to play it. So let's start.
Thank you. That's all from my side. Thanks a lot for listening. It was my pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs>